Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm going to walk you through yet another case study that I had with a client recently. So I built out a large model and at the time was connecting to a certain database for a client with lots of different queries all connecting to a SQL database, many different tables that were being fetched from there. And then at one point there was a new server that was spun up for the client and they wanted a list of all of the tables, database names and servers and everything else from all those queries to be able to then go and add those to the new database because they were doing a migration. Now there's nothing uh, innately easy to extract all that outside of going query by query inside of the Power Query Editor. So what I wanted to leverage is see if I could actually use the XMLA endpoint to extract all that information. So I actually built an Excel file that it connects via the XMLA endpoint to a Power BI workspace that is either using a premium per capacity or premium capacity or fabric capacity. So it does have to require one of the premium capacities to that degree or a premium license at least. But connecting to that, I'm able to actually extract out all of the queries automatically. I found this out from reading a blog by Chris Webb, which I'll highlight in the video, but essentially that lets me extract all that out. And I was able to get a printed list quickly and easily of all of the tables from all those queries that I could send off to the client. So I'll show you how I automated this in this time in Excel. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start this demo, I just want to mention that I got this idea originally from a blog that Chris Webb wrote back in 2019, but essentially for a premium capacity or premium per user workspace, you can use the XMLA endpoint. You can run this DAX query, which then gives you a table that spits all of this out. But I wanted to take this a step further and actually extract out some of the detail in terms of the source criteria that is coming from here and give that into a printed list. So Chris, thanks for the blog, but this is where I got my idea started from here. So now let's flip over to Excel. So essentially the output that I built into here is I have a couple of tables from a few queries pointing to my workspace where I have my parameter name in here, a printed list of all of the parameters that are in my model that are defined as parameters. I have my all queries tab here, which actually has the name of the query, the expression, kind of like what you saw in Chris Webb's blog. But I also have a couple of other things where I'm trying to determine, does this query have a reference? So is this referencing another query as its source? whether or not it is a parameter in and of itself for that particular query, what SQL table it is using, if it's not referencing another query, and what database name is it pointing to. And then those are also printed out explicitly here in a summarized version of all the SQL table names from this model and all the database names from this model. So let's go ahead and look at the queries. Coming up to all queries and opening that up. Now in the query editor, you will see that I have two parameters defined into this, and this is available for download on my blog files page, but I have a parameter for the string that is the workspace connection. And this can be found, as you can see here in the workspace settings at the very bottom, this is the connection string you would put into here for the workspace. And then in the data set, all you need to provide is the actual data set name in said workspace if you want to connect to that. And that loads the rest of these queries. So the one that Chris Webb essentially brought in was utilizing something where it is leveraging some custom statements down here, where it's select star, from system.discoverMexpressions, that just gives you a printed list here. Now, interestingly, I do notice an enable load on this. It's entirely null even when I have load disabled, so I feel like this is maybe an unused column now. I personally am going to be ignoring this, but that was something that I just noticed as an observation. But between my name and my expressions, all of these other things are loaded into here. So I have this that is referenced to give me the list of all of my queries in here. And each one of these, in turn, also pulls out that data. So let's go ahead and start by parameter names. So I started by referencing my Power Queries query, and to get my parameters name, I added that parameter flag. I filtered this to true, and the only thing that I'm doing in my parameter flag is if I'm looking for text contains expression, is query parameter equals true. So I'm looking in the body of this for this particular bit of code, because if that's true, that Power Query query is a parameter query type. So this gives me the filtered rows, that also gives me the parameter string if I wanted to as well for the expression, but I just wanted a list of the parameters in this case. So that gives me the date filter parameter that I had, and you can come back to see what the actual parameter string was. So that's my parameter names, my SQL table names, similarly points to my Power Query queries parameter over there. I add a SQL table name where I'm, in this case of SQL, looking for a row in this that actually has an item and followed by data. Because anytime you have something in here, or it meets those two criteria, in this case, 
we're going to get the SQL table name coming from it because it's parsing out these two. So if we look at this one as an example, we can see that from the AdventureWorks database equals the source and it's grabbing the name AdventureWorks followed by data. So at least in a SQL database pattern, this is what will be fetched out of there when it's grabbing uh, the named entity of a table coming from that database. So that will extract that out of here. I removed other columns, I removed the duplicates, and then I filtered out any blank rows because any of those blanks down here were simply queries that did not point directly to a SQL table and it might have pointed to a reference table instead. So that gives me my SQL table names. Similarly, I did a database name query as well where it starts there. I added a database name where it's grabbing a text between delimiter, source name, and data for those specifically because that's the part of the string, as you can see here, where it's going to be grabbing the AdventureWorks name in there because that's the database name. So that also will give you any databases you have as well. And finally, that all query step where it just shows the name, the expression, and then I added a few steps into here. Query reference actually looks up the name one in here, which is a column that's actually coming from my query name. So I merged this with a fuzzy lookup in this case with the query names over here from the source text in this case, and I'm seeing if this anywhere actually has a connection point. So I wanted to see if there's a approximate match between these query names and anything in this source text. And this column, text between delimiters of the expression, and if I open this up, taking a look, we can see that it's grabbing a few of the names in here from some of those items that we're wanting to potentially map up. There are two referenced queries in here, and then just the database names. And the fact that depending on if that query has spaces or not, it will either be the direct name or otherwise, it will also include the hashtag and quote on both sides to accommodate the spacing. So that's why I did a fuzzy lookup. So with that, that's given me an approximate estimation of the fact that these are likely going to be something that is referencing another query name that exists over in this query names list. So that's how I was able to calculate has a query reference or not in here. And then I removed some of the other columns that were needed to create that. And then we've already discussed the parameter flag, the SQL table name, and the SQL database name. So all of these in turn give a nice outputted collection down into here, into our table where we get our parameter names, queries, SQL table names, and database names in each one of those. So it lists out the names that I can then also refresh this whenever that model changes to get all of these queries again. So it's a nice way to export that. Now, some of you might be wondering if there's any way to connect locally to the model. There is a version of analysis services running inside of your computer whenever you open up a Power BI desktop data set or report. However, I did try this against the local connection, seeing if I could run the select all and give me the M expressions. That was something that I got an error saying this is only a premium feature for premium workspaces. So as of today, you do need a workspace with premium per user, premium capacity, or fabric capacity to be able to access this. But if you have any of those, or could at least temporarily publish this data set up to one of those simply to extract it, this will give you a nice printed list of all of those. And in my case, my client model had about 140 queries. It was an enterprise model that took me approximately six months to build. This took me a little bit of time to set up, but overall, it did save a lot of time that having to go query to query, copying down all those names one at a time. Um, there are some other external tools that might allow you to potentially grab some of this data as well, but I just wanted to use Excel, which is a fairly accessible tool for all of us to be able to leverage outside of the premium restriction. But with that being said, hopefully you like this video. Feel free to drop any suggestions or comments down below in the comment section. Check out some of my related content here on the left. And otherwise, please, I always encourage you to like, comment, and share this video. It really helps the channel grow. And otherwise, I will see you all in my next video.